What's different about the new generation of Sims from real Sim gear is how realistic it is and matches the characteristics of the aircraft. It flies like the same serious aircraft. You can get used to the avionics and understand all the avionics buttons and switchology of how to bring up traffic, maps, weather, terrain, pick a flight plan, do a visual approach using the guidance of the avionics and so forth. And uh, it's nice to be able to remain proficient on engine outage, fire in the cockpit, smoke, etc. What would you do if those things materialize or, or happened in the air? In terms of the investment that we've made into a realistic simulator with real sim gear on the G7, it gives us another revenue source, but also it really feels like you're flying a Cirrus aircraft. And then if something were to happen, you can even simulate the caps pull and bring the airplane all the way down. Cirrus recently upgraded the I am safe acronym. And instead of just I am safe, they added recency to the end of it. So I am safer. And instrument rated pilots have requirements to do six approaches within a six month period. And a AATD simulator, like what we're using from real sim gear with a G7 sim, accomplishes and meets that AATD six a practice approach requirement in that six month period. The goal is not not to just get a PPL, but to become a proficient, competent pilot in command. And a simulator really helps that endeavor. My name's Rick Mosteller. I'm the founder, CEO of Palomar Aviation. We were founded uh, seven years ago here at Palomar Airport as a Cirrus training center. And we now have nine instructors, seven aircraft, and we're a platinum Cirrus CTC. Just a little bit of background on yourself, your first intro to aviation all the way to where we're sitting today with a, a full, fully functioning flight school. So when I was young, my dad got me into model airplanes. I was making wood model airplanes back when I was about 10 years old. Got into U-Control and then remote control and then took my first discovery flight when I was 13. I got up in a uh, airplane with a jet pilot. He took me up in a Cessna 172 and I was hooked. I knew that I wanted to become a pilot and uh, started my flight training when I was about 16, soloed at 17 and then got a license when I was 19. Went to school as an aerospace engineer, so went to school to be in the uh, aerospace business. Went to work for Lockheed Skunk Works and Northrop and Sikorsky, so did a lot of work in defense aerospace, and then moved into the air medical field and was fortunate to join a company that was uh, growing in the air medical industry. We did uh, technology and software to support their dispatch and clinical charting and billing scenarios for air medical. And we grew that, sold that to a public company, which then allowed me to to get into private flight training. So we started seven years ago as a Cirrus exclusive fleet, started with one aircraft, one instructor, and then grew from there. We've always been doing our training in the Cirrus aircraft. The reason we picked Cirrus is because of the advanced designs, the newer technology, the avionics, and of course, the aircraft is built around the parachute. Parachute is a high safety feature, and a lot of our pilots and their pilot spouses really appreciate the uh, parachute. Yes, yeah, so you talk about the transition to the Cirrus Training Center, why you chose Cirrus. Do you have a favorite aspect of being a Cirrus Training Center and the clients you interact with? To fly. You know, it's interesting when you talk to people as they get a little older, everyone wants to be a pilot, but the statistics are there's one pilot in about 1000 people. So it's very few people that actually accomplish that goal. What I have found is that people, when they finally have both time and money and they're ready to learn to fly as a recreational pilot, as a civilian pilot, the Cirrus aircraft gives them a perfect platform to do that. It gives them a lot of situational awareness with the avionics, it gives them traffic, weather, maps, terrain, etc. And all that information is available to them in a touchscreen system with the G6 and the G7 Cirrus aircraft. They can do their flight planning on a smartphone, push it up to the panel, and then navigate with their family from here all the way to San Jose, out to Las Vegas, over to Phoenix. So it really becomes a time machine. And the Cirrus aircraft is the best platform to accomplish that. Cirrus has a phrase, 
of uh, really sponsoring the Cirrus Life, which is a more of a lifestyle. It really compresses time and compresses distance where you can get from San Diego to Santa Barbara in just over an hour, here to Vegas in an hour and a half. I've driven to Vegas and it's taken four to eight hours before. So it really becomes a, a compression of time. So we call it a time machine. And then the reason we pick Cirrus is the Cirrus parachute system, which is built around the aircraft and really helps the airplane from a, a safety perspective. If anything was to ever happen in the air, it's like having airbags on your car. You hope to never use them, but if you need them, it's really nice to know that they're there. And the Cirrus parachute, as long as it's deployed within the uh, parameters of over 500 feet over the ground and less than 133 knots, has a phenomenal safety record of bringing the aircraft slowly back down to the ground. So you obviously at, at the training center, you guys have some incredible instructors, curriculum that goes along with it. You've been pretty well versed in the simulation world for a couple of years now. When you first turned to simulation, what was the business need or underlying reason for wanting to integrate that into the, the training center? So Cirrus came up with the private pilot program several years ago, also called the PPP, and it is a online series of courses, videos, and material quizzes and so forth that takes you through 40 lessons to achieve a private pilot's license. About seven of those lessons include the integration of simulation so that you can do some things in simulation better than in the actual aircraft, such as emergency procedures or getting to know the avionics. Of course, in a simulator, we have the infamous pause button where you can stop the aircraft in flight and basically take a beat and have the student kind of think through through the process and the aviation decision-making of how to select the next information to bring to them as they're flying. By incorporating simulation into the pilot training, help create better pilots, helped keep the price of that flight training reasonable as they learn that information and become more proficient. And then once they become a private pilot, it's a great way to remain current and proficient for either private pilot flying or even more so for instrument ratings. As people start to become instrument rated pilots, they can shoot their approaches in IMC using a simulator, IMC being instrument meteorological conditions. So flying through a cloud, they can bring it all the way down to minimums and you can program that in the simulator with a great deal of safety without having to do it in the air. We have had a simulator for a long time. We upgraded our G6 simulator recently to the G7 simulator from Real Sim Gear. We now have incorporated G7 Garmin Touch Controller or GTC, which allows us to do all that muscle memory of learning the avionics in the simulator, which is working very well. And also the simulator that we have has an integrated caps handle. So we can train and have failures in the air and take it right up to the pole of the caps system and go through that process, which you would never do in a real aircraft. But we can shut down the engine, make sure that we are within the flight parameters to pull caps, actually pull the handle, which takes a good 30 pounds of force. I think it actually goes off at about 35, but it gives you quite a jarring feeling. And it actually feels like you've deployed the parachute in a real airplane. You then shut down the avionics. You continue through the, the Cirrus emergency checklist as your plane is coming down and you actually see what it would feel like as you're descending at about 1,200 to 1,500 feet per minute, right down to a gentle landing on the ground. So those types of things that we can do in the simulator that we can't do in the air is helpful. We also appreciate having a simulator here at the airport that we can move to when the weather here is not conducive for pilot training. So for instance, we might have a uh, weather system rolling through convective clouds. We would see that on foreflight where it's going not only from green clouds, but turning yellow or red, in which case we would stay on the ground. And uh, it's rather than just doing a ground lesson, we can actually move right into the simulator and continue the training and continue flight experience in the simulator rather than having to just do ground training. You've talked about the advantage of the caps, the advantage of the sim when the weather's not great. Additionally, do you have a favorite feature of the sim? Your instructors use it for a specific tool. Your students have a favorite aspect of it. Has there been like an aha moment? 
the sim when they walk in, they don't understand that, oh, it can do this or it can't help me with this. So we recently installed the G7 simulator and we've been really learning the avionics of the new G7 Perspective Plus Touch that Cirrus has incorporated into the G7. There's a lot of embedded menus that sometimes difficult to get to when you don't know where they are. You can kind of try to find them or hunt for them and it really becomes, you want to get to a point of muscle memory to really know where they are and then they're one button away. As Cirrus says, you want everything within to be within touch. So everything's within the touch of the pilot, and if, but you need to know where it is. We have a phrase in Cirrus training called fast eyes, slow hands. So we're looking around you with our eyes and kind of thinking through the aviation decision making of where that information might be, and then move your hand deliberately to, put, to select the right menu button, bring up the information and the situational awareness. And you can do that even better in the simulator because you're not flying in a pattern or flying in inside weather with other traffic. We also really appreciate the uh, pause button of the simulator where when we're flying, if the student needs an extra moment or to kind of take a beat, we push the P button and just pause the sim for a moment while they bring up some additional and think through the process, bring up some additional information and make a decision. From a business owner's perspective, simulation in general and the real sim gear G7, how does it affect the operation of the business through less in revenue, reduced aircraft wear, tracking and clients? A little bit on that. A simulator is a great investment for a training center. It gives us another revenue source for the uh, company in Palomar Aviation, but also it allows our client base to remain proficient and fly with our instructors with more frequency, be able to ensure that they are meeting the standards that they originally had when they achieved their pilot's license, make sure that they continue with that same level of proficiency and don't get any uh, bad habits. We found that by also introducing some emergency procedures with those pilots, many times we'll fly their entire flight career and not have an emergency in the air, but it's nice to be able to remain proficient on engine outage, on fire in the cockpit, smoke, et cetera. What would you do if those things materialize or, or happened in the air? And by being able to simulate that, it makes much more competent pilots, safer pilots. And then if something were to ever happen in the air, their muscle memory is such that they remember what that felt like in the simulator. And then they know how to respond because if that were to ever happen, it would be a very uh, important instance. They would need to respond quickly and not deviate from their training. And by having more training on the ground with those types of procedures in a simulator really helps. In terms of the investment that we've made into a realistic simulator with real sim gear on the G7, it really feels like you're flying a Cirrus aircraft. We have the same avionics, the same screen layout, even has the yoke and seat and uh, rudder pedals in the same position. So it really feels like you flying the sim. And then if something were to happen, you can even simulate the caps pull and bring the airplane all the way down. The other day, all of our airplanes were up flying. I was testing the simulator and I got into a pattern of bringing the weather right down to minimums. I think we had about a 300 foot ceiling in my simulator. It was clear blue outside. That's why all the planes were up flying. But I was able to take the sim right down to minimums on the ILS and then on the RNAV. And I did four approaches in sequence, right down to minimums, went missed, flew up, turned to the right. Few of them were coupled with the autopilot, which felt very realistic. So I was learning that autopilot muscle memory and then also hand flying it. And then a couple times turned off the flight director so that you're just flying with your basic instrumentation of location, altitude and airspeed, but it really gives you a increased level of not only competency, but proficiency. Cirrus recently upgraded the I am safe acronym. And instead of just I am safe, they added recency to the end of it. So I am safer and recency can really be accomplished in a simulator. And the simulator, if it's realistic and feels like the airplane can really help with your recency. We also have a lot of instrument rated pilots who then have requirements to do six approaches within a six month period. And a AATD simulator, like what we're using from Real Sim Gear with a G7 sim, accomplishes accomplishes and meets that AATD six a practice approach requirement in that six month period. They can log in in their logbook, 
They can see, actually do a replay and see how they did on those approaches and it will count towards their currency and make them a safer pilot moving forward. Perfect. So last thought here. Basically, is there anything a training center or a serious pilot reached out? What would you like them to know about using a high fidelity flight simulator? What you think the advantage of a real sim here is and why simulation? Yeah. We get a lot of phone calls asking for simulators, asking if we have a sim available, and there's been sims in the industry for 20 plus years. What's different about the new generation of sims from real sim gear, and especially the G7 sim that we have at Palomar Aviation, is how realistic it is and matches the characteristics of the aircraft. It flies like the same serious aircraft. You can bring it in and uh, do landings with it and actually accomplish landing practice, get used to the aviation avionics and understand all the avionics buttons and switchology of how to bring up traffic and maps, weather, terrain, pick a flight plan, do a visual approach using the guidance of the avionics and so forth. And that really improves currency, improves capability of the pilots. And at the end of the day, makes safer pilots what we call pilot in command. The goal is not to just get a PPL, but to become a proficient, competent pilot in command. And a simulator really helps that endeavor. And then anything else that you want people to know about Palomar Aviation? So Palomar Aviation is located at Palomar Airport, KCRQ in Four Flight. We operate uh, seven days a week throughout the entire year. We do discovery flights where we take people up for one hour and introduce them to the miracle of flight in a Cirrus aircraft. They'll fly with a flight instructor. We do that for a nominal discounted price. And then hopefully people then see the uh, value of training with Palomar Aviation and then they move into flight training. Cirrus has a lot of integrated flight training materials material, including the private pilot program, which allows a pilot to go from their discovery flight all the way through the requirements that they need to learn to become a competent pilot and pass their pilot test. Those 40 lessons are part of the Cirrus private pilot program. We use that at Palomar Aviation, a platinum Cirrus training center to help people become a private pilot. We also use the Cirrus material to help them become an instrument rated pilot. And once they're an instrument rated Cirrus pilot, they're ready to really be a pilot in command and use the aircraft for all the features and functionality that it's designed for.